Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem and see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them, Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved, just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. When they finished, James spoke up. Brothers, he said, listen to me. Simon has described to us how God first intervened to choose a people for his name from the Gentiles. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this as it is written. After this I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild, and I will restore it, that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things, things known from long ago. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For the law of Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times, and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. And the Old Testament reading, Then Elihu said, Hear my words, you wise men, listen to me. You men of learning, for the ear tests words, as the tongue tastes food. Let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. Job says, I am an innocent, but God denies me justice. Although I am right, I am considered a liar. Although I am guiltless, his arrow inflicts an incurable wound. Is there anyone like Job who drinks scorn like water? He keeps company with evildoers. He associates with the wicked. For he says there is no profit in trying to please God. So listen to me, you men of understandings. Far be it from God to do evil, from the Almighty to do wrong. He repays everyone for what they have done. He brings on them what their conduct deserves. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty would pervert justice who appointed him over the earth. Who put him in charge of the whole world if it were his intention and he withdrew his spirit and breath? All humanity would perish together and mankind would return to the dust. If you have understanding, hear this. Listen to what I say. Can someone who hates justice govern? Will you condemn the just and mighty one? Is he not the one who says to the kings, you are worthless, and to nobles, you are wicked? Who shows no partiality to princes and does not favor the rich over the poor? For they are all the work of his hands. They die in an instant, in the middle of the night. The people are shaken and they pass away. The mighty are removed without human hand. His eyes are on the ways of mortals. He sees their every step. There is no deep shadow, no utter darkness where evildoers can hide. God has no need to examine people further, that they should come before him for judgment. Without inquiry, he shatters the mighty and sets up others in their place. Because he takes note of their deeds, he overthrows them in the night, and they are crushed. He punishes them for their wickedness, where everyone can see them, because they turned from following him and had no regard for any of his ways. They caused the cry of the poor to come before him, so that he heard the cry of the needy. But if he remains silent, who can condemn him? 
If he hides his face, who can see him? Yet he is over individual and nations alike, to keep the godless from ruling, from laying snares for the people. Suppose someone says to God, I am guilty, but I will offend no more. Teach me what I cannot see. If I have done wrong, I will not do so again. Should God then reward you on your terms when you refuse to repent? You must decide, not I, so tell me what you know. Men of understanding declare, wise men who hear me say to me, Job speaks without knowledge, his words like insight. Oh, that Job might be tested the utmost for answering like a wicked man. To his sin he adds rebellion. Scornfully he claps his hands among us and multiplies his words against God. Then Elihu said, Do you think this is just? You say, I am in the right, not God. Yet you ask him, what profit is it to me? And what do I gain by not sinning? I would like to reply to you and to your friends with you. Look at the heavens and see, gaze at the clouds so high above you. If you sin, how does that affect him? If your sins are many, what does that do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give to him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness only affects humans like yourself, and your righteousness only other people. People cry out under a load of oppression. They plead for relief from the arm of the powerful. But no one says, where is God my maker? who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than he teaches the beasts of the earth, and makes us wiser than the birds in the sky. He does not answer when people cry out, because of the arrogance of the wicked. Indeed, God does not listen to their empty plea. The Almighty pays no attention to it. How much less then will he listen when you say that, that you did not see him, that your case is before him, and you must wait for him, and further, that his anger never punishes, and he does not take the least notice of wickedness. So Job opens his mouth with empty talk. Without knowledge, he multiplies words.